Wolfenstein, Doom, Duke Nukem, Alternate Sensorium. All these games use an engine called Raycaster. I was always wondering how these games worked, so I decided to write one on my own. Specifically, I'll be using a Wolfenstein style and Raycaster. Because I know that if I didn't mention that, some nerd in the comments would be like, Ah, actually you need to be specific. Shut up. Oh yeah, and I'll be writing it in C with SDL2 like a true Sigma. Anyways, let's open VS Code. No, I'm not gonna use Vim. And start making a top 2D top-down controller. The top-down controller? Yes, you heard correctly. A top-down controller. The engine works by imagining the game board as a 2D grid of blocks on which the player is placed. They have their own X position, Y position and some angle. We can cast a ray from the player, which means imagining a line in some direction and checking until it intersects with a wall. Based on that length, we draw a scan line corresponding to, the s to some column on the screen. We do this for the entire FOV and get this pseudo 3D effect. The map is implemented as a string where the new lines represent the row ends. The player has three parameters, their X and Y positions and some angle of rotation. We make them move in the X axis by multiplying the cosine of the angle by some velocity and by doing the same except with signs in the Y axis. The collision code Oh my god, don't force me to explain this. It's us, and I wrote it about a month ago, so I don't recall how it works myself. <clears throat> so what time is it for now? DDA, which is arguably worse. If you've ever had the pleasure of not having to deal with DDA, it's a line drawing algorithm we use for casting the ray. You know, kind of important for a ray caster. The angle determines the slope of the line. Based on that, we can calculate the length of a line, se line segment whose x and y components respectively are one grid unit apart. Just uh, the length of these two lines. I'll denote them unit step x and unit step y. Then, we basically create two accumulators, step x and step y. We increment them until we hit a wall, with the condition that if step x is smaller than step i, we increment step x, usually by unit step x, and otherwise we implement step y by unit step y. The only exception is the initialization. We firstly have to calculate this distance, d. We compare d times unit step x by d times unit step y. If if d times unit step x is smaller, we increment step x by d times unit step x, and if not, guess what, we increment step y by d i times unit step y. Sounds convoluted, right? That's why I was complaining before. You think I was over exaggerating? You sicko. Oh, and by the way, this, on this is only for a uh, angle between 0 and... 90 degrees, you have to extend it for the full unit circle. Anyways, this website saved my ass, so I should at least give it a shout out. So, C A A A A SH. Also, this is this annoying fisheye effect that I conveniently don't have on camera, so I have to steal from a screenshot but which looks like that and can be solved by multiplying the distance by a cosine. As of now, the game looks like this, but the green feels a bit monotone, so let's replace it with a texture. We can subdivide the block into several sections. Then, we check which segment did the ray hit and project the stretch texture based on that. The formula for column, with... yeah, I saw it from the internet. I also tried to implement a floor caster, but... Well, I think we can just scrap that. Instead, I implemented a map, a binary search tree, to hold the textures, which are bound to an ASCII symbol. 
I also colored the floor and ceiling since the black looked boring. But despite all the work we've done, it feels so lonely here. What was this for? What did I achieve? I thought writing a raycaster would give me freedom, but instead I'm just here, stuck alone, my room being my prison. Oh. Hi Miku. I'm spared. The spray drawing algorithm works by freshly calculating the angle day less color than entity makes with the x axis. Her position and the player position form a vector. Using this, we can calculate an angle theta between the aforementioned vector and the x axis with this rather odd looking function, basically a ten that preserves the quadrant sign. If the entity is visible on the screen, Theta will and the leftmost angle of the FOV form some angle Q. We multiply uh, Q by some width per scan line, which turns out to be the screen width divided by the FOV. Q is usually the player rotation plus uh, FOV over 2 minus Theta. Except for some edge cases, I link this article in the description. This MF was also a lifesaver by the way, since I haven't found any article making it as com comprehensible as this one. This calculates the X position of a sprite that is projected on the screen. The Y position is always centered and the scale is determined by this equation. Uh, this also took another week of fixing weird typecasting bugs, math mistakes and not understanding TF is going on. Side note, this is so fucking real, I'm so excited to be having to deal with this when I graduate. I know no one is seeing this as my retention rate is crap, so KTHX, bye.